downloading uh, data from Eurostat is very similar to using um, the Danish Statistical Office. The interface is a bit more complex and they have some more elements in it. But anyway, more or less the same. So what we'll do is that, of course it has this very long web address, but if you just Google Eurostat, you'll find them. The first thing we do is, once we get it there, we'll go click on the data and then go down to the databases. That will give us a list of databases, just like we had tables in um, the Danish Civil Office. What's important is that you keep on drilling down until you get this little icon, a table with a little magnifying glass on it. And that's what they call a um, explorer icon. So if you go into uh, there and uh, Let's just say Eurostat. Oh. So, Eurostat. So, I can now go in data, databases. And it will hopefully load some data. And we can then browse by theme. And we want databases, so we'll go and look at some ooh, agricultural data and um, organic farming. So here we have these data explorer icons. Don't try and download the data set, that just gives you trouble. So organic uh, produce. Uh, of animal origin, that's what we're going to take. And in this, once we get the data set up, we'll get a table. Um, so it's somewhat like the data statistics. Well, we have our additional elements up here. And what we have is that we always, by default, it says time and geo and one of these. So we have our um, meat of livestock. So here we have tons produced of in each country in the year 2013 and 2014 of meat of livestock. And we could have goats if we wanted goats instead. Um, and it updates with production of goats. So that's basically the interface. If I just drop back to my thing here, so we navigate down to it, and we could then drag in our data sets. Um, what's important here is that if this geo here has this little plus, and you can see here I've got the country names, and I don't want the country names, I want the country codes. I've got the plus there, and I've also got the plus there. Click here and it will say, what do you want? Is there only some specific countries you want data for, all of them? And how do you want it labeled? And I only want it to give me the codes because that's what I'm using for my, uh, my joining with. Then I might not be interested in this one product for two years, I might want to see the product, all the different products for one year. So what I'll do is that I drag down my products onto where it says time at the moment, and it will change the order. So now it has products down here, and I put time up as my attribute up here. So now I'm looking in 2013, and now I'm looking in 2014, and then I have a column for each of my attributes, different types of um, organic animal production. So this is how I want my data. I want codes and my geo. I want my primary attributes I'm interested in across my, uh, my columns. And I can just choose what type of um, uh, sizing I want it in. So I've got it in tons. So that's fine and I can now press the download button. So I had to format it inside this data explorer. 
And what we see here it says, we want all of our data, that's four tables, that's because it gives us all the years. But instead, we don't want it in one sheet, we want them in separate sheets. And that's very important, because we don't want them to be mixed up when we try to load it into QGIS. We want it to be in each their sheet. And uh, flags and uh, that's fine. And separators, 1,000 separators format. Don't think we, or without thousands. I don't know if we can change them off and on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can. Uh, we don't want these thousand separators. They do strange things. So, we got our data and we download it. And we open it in Excel. And what we see is that we got our three tables here. This table was for 2013, and there's basically only data on eggs for 2013. Number two was ton production. We had this one was numbers. This was tons produced, and there's not counting of tons produced in um, eggs. And then we have the same for our 2014, it's only the eggs that are in numbers and all the other ones are in um, in tons. So I want this one. To, so this one is number four, is 2014's ton. I can just uh, oops, enable anything and I can call it uh, Ton two thousand and fourteen like that. So now it's got that name, and I now want to get rid of these. I don't want them. This one is my geo, so I just want to get rid of this slash echo, whatever. So this looks fine. Um, you can see that here it has a colon for where it doesn't have any data. Um, it says down here sparse data, not available. So I get rid of this, and I don't. I want. It's very important to get rid of these because they are text, and QGIS will then say, okay, there's a text in the column, and the whole column is represented as text. So I just get rid of all those colons by doing a search on colon and replacing it with absolutely nothing. Place all. So now all my colons is gone. So I've got nice numbers everywhere and empty where there's no data. No data is not the same as zero. And I can go up and I can save as, and I will save it down in my GIS and call it. Let's use the newest version and call it organic agro. Like that. And I can close it down. And if I go in and take my, I have my organic agro. And I'll just dump that onto my QGIS that's there. And this time, I don't what it does is that behind, if I could get <laughs> there, you can see it has different uh, spreadsheets. And this was this turn, that was the one I wanted. So I got my data in it. And if I, everything has gone well, I just check. I have an attribute for each of these and they are numerical. You see, they are right aligned, so that's fine. So all of this data is right, and I have a code out here. Now all I need is the spatial data to go with, and I have downloaded that before. So I'll just go down and find my NOTS data set here. That's the one I downloaded. And what we can see is that there are one, two, three shapefiles here. 
uh, PDF documents or whatever. And what it says is that this is called a BN, that's the boundary lines, that's the label point, and this is the areas. So this is the one that we want to use for this purpose. And I zoomed it in in Denmark. And if I now use my little eye tool and click on somewhere, you'll be surprised to see that there are one, two, three, four different ones. And that's because this is the Denmark as the country. Here we have it as a notes level one. Nuts level 2 and Nuts level 3, that is our, uh, whatever that is, um, unit here. So we have our, that's Nuts level 3, that's Nuts level 2, that's Nuts level 1, and that's Nuts level 0. And you can see this DK that we had in our table. That's our Nuts level 0. So we have all of the notch levels in the same data set. But that doesn't matter because when we're going to join in a moment, only the ones that match will be included. But we could of course remove them if we wanted to do that by setting a filter and say, okay, we only want to have notch level zero here. So we go up and say properties and general and set up a filter that our level should be equal to zero. That so now we only got the con the individual countries of the European Union. Some of the data set is right out there because there's colonies. So we got our data set ready, and what we want to do is we want to join it. So we go and say properties, and we go and say join. We add a join, we join from our data set there, and what we wanted to join on was geo, had to be the same as our knots ID. And OK. And I should now hopefully be able to make a map on any of these attributes I had, so gradiated and choose the production of sheep, uh, classify it, I want to have my quartile, so that's 20% in each one, and OK, and of course there's some where there's no data, that's the ones that fall out, so that's annoying. Um, so there's no registration on organically produced sheep in Denmark for year 2013. However, if I wanted to make sure that I had the field in the countries, I could just simply go down and I could in load in, I'll take my boundary lines, that was that one, or I could take um, an alternative, which would be to take my layer here and simply copy it, sorry, duplicate. Now I've got it twice and down in this bottom one here I want to change it to have a everything independent on it is displayed as just country in the green. So I now have those that are not filled in, where I have no data in this green background color so I can see, ah, it's not because that there's been a sea rise, that there's nothing here, it's because there was no data for it. So that was the use of um, the knots or Eurostat and how to map that.